<laughs> this is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. This show is brought to you by Pet King Brands, the makers of Zymox and Oratine. It's OBA with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. How well do you know cats? Maybe I should rephrase. How well do you hope to know cats? Guess what? Help is here. Our special guests today are going to school you in a good way. All things C A T. Please welcome to the show the founders of the Cat Lovers Academy. Jessica and John Bartlett. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. It's nice to meet you. Congratulations on 15 years with oh, yeah. Dave. It's amazing. See? They're our first guest in 2022 that we can say we have been on the air, the Obehave show, since 2007, making us 15 years. And according to my producer, the cool Mark Winter, we are now the longest running pet podcast on the planet, and I did not pop a peek. But let's get back to our special <laughs> guest. As you guys are all going to discover, listeners, it was their love and advocacy for cats that actually brought these two together. They exchanged I do's, and now they're taking on the roles of, you know me, professors. Yes, professors of why cats do what they do. And more importantly, how us two leggers can better communicate and even interact with fine felines. But first, we got to take this commercial break. So sit and purr. We'll be right back. Time for a pause. For furry ones, actually, sit and stay. All Behave will be right back. Hey, pet pals, Arden Moore here. Got dog? Of course you do. Our friends at Carlson Pet Products have some great products to keep your dog happy and safe. They have a lineup of decorative and durable doorway gates. Hey, I got two and I love them. They keep my dogs Kona and Emma out of the two rooms where my cat's litter boxes are. My cats are able to slip in and out of the small opening of the gate when needed. I installed these gates in minutes. The gates are easy to use and match my decor. Learn more by dashing over to carlsonpetproducts.com today. You'll be glad you did. Get 25% off your order plus free shipping using the promo code PETLIFE at carlsonpetproducts.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now, back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I give pause and applause to our special guests today, Jessica and John Bartlett. They're fast becoming the go-to experts when it comes to cats. Yes, we know cats can be candid, clever, and even confounding. But on today's show, Jessica and John are here to take away some of this feline mystique. So I am so excited you're both on the show. Is everybody ready? Because cat school is in session. So before we get to our lessons, professors, let's start a little bit about each one of you. Jessica, I'm just kind of curious as maybe a cat. What was the first word you ever uttered as a child? Was it kitty? Oh, it probably was dog, actually. Oh, <laughs> dog. Okay. My, my earliest memory, I was probably like two. We had, I grew up with chows. My mom was a huge chow, um, oh, chow, wow. chow person. And so, you know, this was in the 70s. And so getting pets spayed and neutered wasn't like the high priority. And so I just remember having <laughs> a lot of furry siblings. 
Yes. And I just remember seeing and it's all my first memory ever as like a two year old of a dog in a diaper or or tidy whities because she was in menstruating or, you know, and that's stuff. And I was crawling around after her. It was isn't that the weirdest memory. But yeah, dogs. I grew up with dogs. OK, that's pretty fun. I didn't expect that. You threw me a curveball. <laughs> and John, you have quite a social media following. Um, can you tell our listeners? I know you've been helping foster kitties with Perfect Pal since 2008. Is that right? Yes. So how did you become known? I love this. Foster Dad John. Uh, so I've been broadcasting kittens on YouTube for about three litters. And all of a sudden, everything just went, exploded and became viral. I had 20,000 people watching. And wow. They decided I needed some of the viewers that I knew decided that I needed something a little bit more relatable and as to stand out as the person in charge of this cam versus just a John Bartlett. Okay, and that's yeah, where of Foster course. Dad John came from. So, I mean, you're saying you're filming kittens. Are you a kitty stalker? What were you doing, dude? <laughs> I know yeah, you're I, a I, computer I followed my programmer. With the cameras and all <laughs> Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Got the <laughs> this, uh, just had a webcam on a tripod pointing at an area where the fosters were and people would tune in 24 seven to watch the kittens play or sleep, mostly sleep. And I think he first started it because it was in a room and he wanted to see what they were doing. Okay. And then he was like, Oh, well, why not broadcast it to everybody else? And that's kind of, mm -hmm. if I can watch, why not other people? Yeah. You're kind of like the Netflix prelude wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. Cause <laughs> your people are hooked on it. And what about you? I mean, we know that uh, Jessica didn't go meow as her first word. What got you to kind of team up with cats? Because I think real men love cats. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've had cats all my life and a friend of mine's cat had kittens and she asked me to take care of them for her. She lived in an apartment Yeah, and that got fostering in my blood. And about five years later, I reached out to, I started volunteering with Perfect Pals and then I reached out to them in their fostering program and they took me on. Yeah. The ladies all kind of invited him in and he just, oh, of came. Course. you know, He's they all second kind of guy. He doesn't just have a face for radio, everyone. <laughs> so they, he automatically like fell into the, that crowd and, and uh, yeah, they just all took him in. And we're like, okay, and ushered him in. <laughs> okay. So we're going to fast forward because you guys are all out of diapers. You went through puberty. <laughs> Yay. I met everyone, Jessica, when she was this stellar member of a professional pet sitting organization called the National Association of Professional Pet Sitters. It's called NAPS, N-A-P-P-S. And I'm always joking like, wakey, wakey, <laughs> NAPS. But in 2015, she was the co-winner of the business of the year for NAPS. That's very big national organization for your pet sitting company, Whiskers at Home. So Jessica, congrats on that. Thank you. But you made a big shift. Was it 2018 when you said, I'm just going cat only? Uh, yeah, actually, it was a little bit earlier than that. Okay. So 2013. Oh, okay. I, when I started the business in 09, I wanted to do cats only, but I was told, no, that's not a possibility that, you know, you need dogs to support you. And so in 2013, I had a base clientele and I, you know, just decided, hey, I'm going to jump and do my dream. And it was, it was really the response was mixed. Dog parents were like insulted that I would not do like they just didn't understand. <laughs> exactly. Like it's they, they thought I they thought I lost my mind. And then cat people were gravitating towards me because okay. they were like, oh, you understand the cat language. Oh, you're not going to have dog smells coming into the house. Oh, oh you're going to be able to really focus on my detailed notes because, you know, as we know, cat people, they're very very particular, right? And so, yeah. and then that's when the floodgates kind of started to open up because it was cat only. And then cat people were gravitating to me and appreciating that we were catering to their needs. And folks, whiskers at home.com. She and John, they're based in Bellevue, Washington. But I also, before we get into your amazing Cat Lovers Academy that you've launched, the two of you, come on, we want a little wah, wah, wah now. Let's get some love connection. Was it love at first purr with you and John? No, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so John's a super introvert guy, right? And Extrovert so, over here. Yeah. And so I had, while well, he was running an apartment complex and I, there was a stray cat and kitten back there that we thought was pregnant. Okay. And I contacted perfect pals and we were able to get him into the John's critter room, which is where he fosters. 
And so that was a year before we even met. So he didn't know I was associated with that. Turns out the cat was not pregnant, but John, he did a Halloween prank and, and said that there was this whole like pre new pregnancy test for cats. And he like was playing with litter and it was ridiculous. Anyway, it's in a whole other story for another Were you time. smoking some catnip then, John? Or what? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was the funniest thing. And of course, his fans loved it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, most of them did. Some yeah. of them, it's like, I, I'm a prankster. I love pranks. And even if I'm the target, and some people didn't appreciate that. It was funny. <laughs> so anyway, so we, so um, she didn't end up being pregnant, but I ended up getting her adopted to one of our clients. So a year, fast forward a year later, we're at this big event for Jackson Galaxy. We're in the VIP section. And I started, I was like, oh, hey, I brought Morticia in. And then, then he gave me the time of day and would talk to me. <laughs> but really, he's just, because we've been to a ton of events together, but he's so introverted that talking to someone stranger was like, you know, the death basically. So stranger danger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so because we had Morticia in common, he was like, then he felt like he could open up a little bit more. So, so Morticia he, was the icebreaker. Correct. Yeah. yeah. That gave that gave her street cred. Yes. Oh. I, I needed to have some credibility first before you talk to me. <laughs> so how long have you two been married? We have been married since June of 2020. Um, and we've been dating since uh, 2017. And we just celebrated two years of living together as well with all of our cats. Thank you, COVID. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. now we got a better idea, folks, of who we we're speaking with. And uh, while some of us were binge watching on the sofa and gaining weight during uh, the first year of COVID, our team here was going back to school. And I like the fact and I still even at my old age, um, I believe that you should always be a student and a teacher. Mm -hmm. So how did you spend 2020, Jessica? Were you sitting on the couch just binge watching? No, I was not. Definitely not. So I, as soon as everything kind of shut down, I was like, oh, this is a great opportunity for me to, to improve and finish my certification for feeling training and behavior. So I finished that off in 2020 with two classes. And of course, one of them was extremely intense because it was the end of the course. And then the other one was probably the most influential, which was animals, minds, and emotion. And that was fascinating in the fact that, you know, we really, it's about getting down on the animal's level and knowing that they have emotions, right? We know that they have feelings and emotions and understanding that and looking at it from their point of view, not necessarily our point of view. Um, so that was probably the most impactful class that I took. So that's what I did in 2020. And then in 2021, I just have continued on with that. And so at the end of 2020, we started the Cat Lovers Academy. Nice, nice. So Cat Lovers Academy, I kind of teased you at the beginning that we're going to get schooled by John and Jessica. So I want to kind of right now, folks, they live what they teach. John? What's the uh, feline count in the Bartlett household? We have uh, seven cats. Seven cats. Seven and cats, Jessica, all girls. All girls. Ooh, hiss and tell. You are living life with cats. So, John, what's your thought about launching, you know, getting involved in this Cat Lovers Academy? And I do know, great news for all you feline fans, there's more cats in households than dogs. Mm -hmm. I love dogs. I love cats. I actually really like people, too. There's something wrong with me. <laughs> but you're feeling a need, aren't you, John? Yes. What is it about Cat Lovers Academy that people need to start tuning in? Because if they have cats, there seems to be a lot of resources out there for people who have dogs. I think cat got his tongue. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you look behind it, we're getting inundated by cats. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's, um... If you want to jump in in a minute, let's get Jessica on board. I got this. I got this. We're all good, John. We're all good. <laughs> Well, I think you went back to the point of that cats, there's more cats than dogs and cats don't get what they need. Like there isn't a education out there. So like there's dog training, there's, you know, dog therapists, there's all of that stuff with cats. There's not out there and it's not in one place. You have to go out and hunt it down and then kind of piece it all together. And for cats, it's, you know, they can be trained. They really can be trained and people don't realize that and understand that. So when I was talking to people about what we were trying to do, they're like, well, why would I train, you know, just my furniture? Like, and, and cats are more than just furniture. They're more than just, and you can really build that bond with them and you start to understand their needs. Well, part of it is I know cats own the house guys. We just write the mortgage check. That's exactly right. But I think a key thing I would hope you both could talk about is 
resources. You have seven cats in your home and you are not in a 17,000 square foot home, I'm assuming. Wish. No, I, I don't want to clean that much, actually. Okay. <laughs> so on your site, and I want everybody after the show to, to please go to catloversacademy.com. But can you give me a rundown of some things that you have in your house that mm -hmm. are like kitty resources that may reduce? Yeah. So big thing is the cat trees. I'm a huge cat tree fan. And so we okay. have about 27. We might be up to 30 since our last count. <laughs> I just like She's to collect not joking. them. I, I, uh, I like to collect them and the cats love them and they get used all the time. So, you know, they can go up high if they want to get away. They can, you know, scratch, which is scent marking for them, you know, or I like to call it artwork. And so yeah, yeah. Um, like some is of our old cat graffiti. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Our oldest one is the most rattiest one, but it's the most favorite one. Right. And so, yeah. well, it's kind of like a bottle of fine wine, don't you think? Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. That's a great point. We're a big fan of K&H heater pads. Okay. And so we have, I think at last count 16 in the house. Oh my and gosh. every single one of them gets used every day, especially when we're in the twenties, like we have been the last two weeks. So you can tuck them underneath a towel. You can put them inside of a cat bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're very safe. They're warm, but they're not going to burn down right. your house. And they also only heat up when someone's on them. Yeah. They come in, you know, a fairly small size to very Same with large. me, but that's another. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing you mentioned, you know, we talk about the heating pads. That's important. But let's talk about things that uh, like water fountains or even, you know, pet beds and things like that. You've got to really think like a cat, don't you? Yeah, we've just changed over our water fountains. And so we have two excellent ones that are just more comfortable for the cats because it's at a height. It's a little bit bigger. As far as bedding, so the great thing about the, the heater pads is that we can just slip them right into their beds. So we oh, have okay. we have about, I don't know, 15 to 20 all over, and each one has a different preference. And so we make sure that there's multiple spots of each preference so they can choose. And then the other, like Libby really loves hidey holes. Okay. So we get like, um, like Target has these amazing cat cardboard box things that like are in shapes of, you know, a Christmas tree, a train or a house, like a ski lodge. And she just loves to sleep in them. And no one, le everyone leaves her alone and she's just in her little safe spot. One tip about cat beds is that if your cats are not using them, it's probably yeah. nothing wrong with the cat bed. It's the location. Mm. Just move it to a different spot. Very good tip, John. Very good tip. Hey, everyone, we're speaking with Jessica and John Bartlett. They are the brains behind Cat Lovers Academy. Go to catloversacademy.com after the show. And also they have, is it both of you or just you, Jessica, run the whiskers at home? It's just me. Okay. John helps. He's the support staff. <laughs> okay. John's a good dude. She also has a cat only professional cat sitting business called Whiskers at Home up in uh, Bellevue, Washington. Yes, that's correct. Where it never shines the sun, which is why you need all those heating pads. Hey, when we get back from this commercial break, we're going to talk to them about some situations and maybe some advice that they can help us with. So you all know the drill. Sit and purr. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Hey, pet pals, Arden Moore here. Is your dog or cat prone to ear infections? Does your pet resist having his ears cleaned when they're inflamed or irritated? Are you also concerned about the overuse of antibiotics? Help is here. Zymox ear care products offer soothing relief. And hey, you're going to love this part. They don't require the ear to be cleaned before you apply the drops. It's as easy as fill, rub, and done. That means less touching of those sensitive ears to help create a soothing, fear-free experience. Apply just once a day. Zymox gets its effectiveness from enzymes not antibiotics. That means no side effects and no antibiotic resistance. You can find these veterinary recommended products at your veterinary clinic, most pet specialty retailers, and online. And here's a real treat. Yeah, I did say the word treat. Save 20% off any Zymox or Oratine product on Zymox.com. Just use the code ARDEN20 at checkout. That's ARDEN20. To learn more, visit Zymox.com. That's Z-Y-M-O-X.com. Pause up. 
Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hey, everybody. This is Jackson Galaxy from Animal Planet's My Cat from Hell. And I'm here with Arden Moore on the wonderful O Behave show on Pet Life Radio. Don't miss it. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to O Behave. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the O Behave show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I'm having a miyavelous time. That's because our special guests are Jessica and John Bartlett of Cat Lovers Academy. And uh, Jessica, you and I are buds from a way back. You knew my now seven-year-old long-legged cat, pet safety cat, Casey. Handsome dude. He was a young, uh, mischievous kitten, I think, when you first met him, right? Yeah, we were in Dallas and I was I, I stole him out of the room and we went for a walk. I'm at this conference and I'm looking around. I'm like, who took my ginger boy? <laughs> <laughs> what was it about Casey that made you say, "Ooh, he's the cat's pajamas? Oh, well, he's super handsome. And he, you know, he was just so comfortable with everybody and confident. And so he was just like, I'm just doing my thing. Go, you want to go for a walk with me? Come on. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, let's He's listening to you right now in my backyard office, Ard's Den, and he said the perfect hello to you, and he hopes to meet John, too, because he digs dudes, too. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's nice. (laughs) So you guys have seven. All right. You're uh, I'm going to I'm going to put you on the spot. John, name your seven cats. Go. We have Ruthie, Libby, Harley, Nakia, Beatrice, Penny, Trillian. And that's not even an age order like I normally do. I was like, "Uh oh, we're going to lose count because normally we do age order. (laughs) And I am not Oprah. You do not win a car. You win my admiration. All right. So let's get into some issues because cats live in our homes. Well, pre-COVID more than we do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But now we're there, too. There's a lot of things that can happen. We could cover a bunch of things. But tell us how your Cat Lovers Academy is structured Because if you don't live in Washington, the state, it doesn't matter. You can still help us out. Explain that, Jessica. Yeah. So we have feline behavior consulting services that we're offering, and that can be done virtually. And so, you know, you go to our website, you can find out more information and then also fill out the contact form and we'll do a 30 minute free consultation call. Yeah. And then after that, once you're, you know, we're all on the same page and ready to get started, you'll fill out a a history form that can take anywhere from 14 to 30 minutes. It's very detailed to get as much information as possible. And then we'll set up times that we can meet and we'll via Zoom, we'll talk about what's going on. You'll be able to show me the house. So it is really for everybody. But not only do we have the paid side services, we also have free services, which each one of our cats are being put to work as professors. And they each each have their own topic. And so we are slowly kind of adding to each individual page. So, you know, right now, like Trillian is on the litter. She's on litter duty, right? So you can go to her page. And we've done quite a bit on there with Facebook, um, going through the different subjects and boxes. And then Ruthie, on the other hand, is all about clicker training. And that's really where a lot of our focus is going to be. And that's because I really believe in positive reinforcement. And I've seen it make a huge difference in our own house. Well, we know cats are hunters. Mm -hmm. So one way to maybe mitigate or minimize some of the things we don't want our cats to do like SOS, save our sofa and things like that, or miss the litter box and all that. There's a lot of reasons why they do it. And if you ask any good old cat, they're going to tell you it's a very valid reason because blah, blah, blah. Exactly. So how does something like getting them more into more structured play, maybe be a win-win for both the human and the feline? Yeah, I think for cats, it's all about routine, right? And right. and that's how they are feel comfortable and confidence in themselves and their environment, because there's nothing that's going to be surprising them. So twice daily play is super important. And that could be based on whatever the cat's desire is. Like some of our cats really like clicker training and others like to have under like to play stick under the rug or stick under the blanket. You know, others like the wand free flowing. For um, for B, one of our cats, B, she loves the laser light and she needs to play with dad. And if she doesn't get that playtime, her confidence goes down by quite a bit. Really? She gets very nervous around others. She doesn't want to come out into the rest of the house. And so I really look at when they're using their hunting brain, they don't have time to be nervous or have anxiety. It's kind of it pushes that out because they're having their endorphins being used and activated. 
So I'm just wondering, John, what's under your refrigerator and your couch, do you think? Well, we were actually, we recently <laughs> rearranged our sofa and we found a small mountain of toys. The fridge hasn't been pulled out in a while, but I'm pretty sure it's the same there. Oh my God. I know we did the same thing and we were like, there's the spring toys. There's the toy mice. Mm -hmm. And the cats are sitting us like, yeah, we've been waiting for you. <laughs> but, you know, you've got a college degree, really. <laughs> but let's talk about things like, so you've got a cat that may want to claw the furniture mm -hmm. because they don't have something that would be better. What would be a couple of suggestions? And you got to be careful when you give suggestions, right? Just because, because you're talking to people. <laughs> yeah. It's very sensitive, right? Because you don't want to cross any lines or make people feel like they don't know. They're not caring for their pets the best way because that, that's not never the case, right? It's just all about understanding the cat's needs. And so for, for me, I, whenever we talk about scratching on, on furniture, it's kind of like, well, are they scratching on a horizontal or a vertical surface? Good. And so okay, good. you're getting cat clues, right? Yeah. And so if it's, if we're, if they're scratching on the side of the couch, well, they, they want something that they can stretch out their arms up high and scratch that way. So then maybe do you have vertical trees in the house? And if not, then, then maybe, because a lot of people have the cardboard, the flat cardboard, and that's yeah. great, but that's not going to need, you know, they're, they're match their needs of having something that's vertical. Casey's a long lean mm -hmm. scratching machine. And so I have an angle up and down and horizontal. Perfect. Yeah. And, and then also the type of material, is it like, oh. is it rug? Is it, you know, sometimes each couch is a little bit different in the material, right? You know, how does it feel on their paws? So having that discussion. And then, you know, once you have that, you can always put, you put something that's similar in front of the area that they're scratching Good. and, and then you reward them with treats when you're saying, when they're scratching something that you want them to do. Okay. What about wonderful? I just got a kitten for Christmas and my seven-year-old cat is not throwing a party. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough, huh? Well, it's all about patience with that and, you know, really making sure that you're doing a slow introduction. For us, we learned the hard way when we moved in together, you know, the cats were doing so well. And then, so we we're like, okay, let everyone out. And that was, you know, for us, that didn't work. We're still, you know, sometimes actually paying for it. So take it from personal experience. It's slower is better. And so that means having them separated and then slowly, you know, making sure that the smells are interchangeable. So you can okay. use a sock for that. You can use bedding. You could, you know, make sure you're feeding on either sides of the door, but it's critical for the, the happiness of you. And then most, more importantly, the cats to do it very, very slowly. Even it looks like it's going on. Yeah. So how do you know when two cats are playing mm. and when two cats are really in a spat. Yeah. It's all about the sounds. Okay. Yeah. So if they're playing, they're not going to have many, there's not going to be a ton of sound. So it's they're like feline mimes. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to remember each cat is so different. So if like we have a really noisy cat, that kind of came up and said hi a minute ago. And so she like, she doesn't wrestle with anyone, but if well, she, she wants did, her name on the radio, we are friggin' say Nikia. hi to her. Yeah. Nakia, she left us. She's we, we were bored. Um, Nakia. Okay. Yeah. So each cat's different and you have to know how they are normally. Are they chatty cats or are they not? But basically cats that are going to wrestle aren't going to be screaming at each other. They're not going to be growling at each other, hissing. They're just going to be wrestling and having a good time, but you can tell when it gets very vocal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And what about uh, eyes and body? Well, I was, I was going to say, if you see one cat trying to, to retreat and the ears going down or hiding or hunching and the other one's being very forceful, that's not equal play either. Okay. So I'm just going to go in and grab them by the scruffs, right? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best way to break up a cat fight safely for you and to help restore a bond with those two cats? Yeah. Well, they sometimes call it an act of God, right? So you can make a really loud noise, but you want to make sure it's not associated with you. Okay. Um, you could kind of, others have suggested you put towels over them and you know, keep them separated because you don't want to get hurt. A lot of times breaking their line of sight mm -hmm. oh, with cool. each other. That, uh, that's how I diffuse a lot of things in the house. Well, I got something here I use. Ready? This is radio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, is that a clip? Yeah, it's a it's just a chip clip, you know, for yeah. the potato chips, but it looks like everybody a gray face of a cat. Mm -hmm. And uh Casey just gave me stink eye. Like I'm yeah. sleeping. But ma. that's something weird, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Something Did I that... do it good for radio? Yes, thank okay. you. 
Okay. Yeah, something that's not associated with you, but you can get their distraction without looking, you know, getting them away. But yeah, you don't want, you can get really severely hurt. If they're a full on fighting, yeah, do not get between them, grab a broom or something to try to separate them with gently. Okay. But don't, uh, you know, when they're full on fighting, they're not going to pay attention to who's behind them, who's touching them. They're just going to react. Yeah. And uh, unlike our dogs, like the Chows way back mm -hmm. when, uh, Jessica, they have flexible spines and I call it five weapons of mass destruction. So true. Claws and teeth, right? Pointy side up. Yeah. 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 They really are murder machines, right? I mean, that's what they're designed for. So a parting message you want to share. We're in 2022. We'll, we'll start with Jessica and give John time to come up with some because I, he's <laughs> shy, but he's brilliant. So Jessica, what's a, a message you'd like to say to all our, our listeners out there that are just lucky, doggone lucky to have a cat or more in their life? Yeah. So I think each cat is so individually different. So keeping that really in mind and that you know your cat the best. And I can't stress enough, like if you see something that's a little off, it could be a medical issue and you want to contact your vet and you want to contact them early. Like there is no overreaction because in COVID our vets clinics are really overwhelmed and very short staffed. And we want to be as compassionate as possible with them. Good. And so we don't want emergencies. That's the biggest thing I could say during this time of COVID um, is that really work, be a partner with your vet and be patient and be kind to them because they're really struggling right now. I and to add on to that, that could be something as simple as laying down where they don't normally lay down. Really? Okay. Yeah, as I got Mercury, I found him um, laying down in the kitchen and he never laid it down there and reviewing footage. It turned out he just had a seizure. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I teach pet first aid mm -hmm. and you've taken the class. I have. Guys. Yeah. yeah. Fabulous. So I'm just saying, I applaud you for that because we need to be, it sounds like cat detectives mm -hmm. and first responders. That's probably showing true feline love. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. Any little thing like Penny, she had a massive tooth infection and the only way we knew that was because she thought she was seeing ghosts. Like she would like, she went from like the perfect, like friendly cat to all of a sudden like jumpy. And, and oh. honestly, like we had no idea. We just knew something was really wrong with her and thankfully we could get in. Yeah. It's all about being a pet detective. Well, I know they talk about uh, man being dog's best friend. Uh, folks, Jessica and John Bartlett are cat's best friends. And how do we find out more about you guys? John, what are the websites? You're a computer guy. <laughs> There's a catloversacademy.com. Okay. That's our main site. And then um, if you're in the Bothell Bellevue area, um, Whiskers at home. Yep. And then his website is uh, the critterroom.com. Critterroom.com. And we do want to do a, you still helping out the perfect uh, pals? Yeah. Perfect pals and homeward pet. We're not fostering right now just because our, our own cats have enough medical needs that's taking up our time. But uh, as far as the Critter Room, I'm also on Facebook and YouTube. All right. Well, listen, guys, we just had a great time. We just got schooled. I think we all got passing grades. I hope professors Jessica and John, did we? Yes. yes. Thank you. You're Thanks for having good. us. Yes. Thank you. Hey, I want to do a shout out also for my producer, Mark Winter. We have been on the air again since 2007. I like to call them two titles, Wizard of Paws and Surgeon of Sound. Woo! Pause, pause, pause. Cut, cut, cut. Uh, please check out Pet Life Radio and all the great shows on our network. We're here for you and your pets. And we have great guests, as you've heard right now with Jessica and John Bartlett. And uh, if you get really bored, go to Ardenmore.com. What the heck? See who this crazy broad is behind the mic. But until next time, this is your flea free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two three and four leggers out there oh behave coast to coast and around the world it's all behave with arden moore find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in rin tin tinseltown from famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.